Hello guys, my name is Confucianti and you're welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be comparing the Infinix Note 12 VIP against the Redmi Note 11 Pro. Okay, starting with the designs of these phones, I would say the Infinix Note 12 VIP is slightly lighter at 199 grams and also a bit less thick at just 7.9 mm. It has this luxury looking camera bump which I really like. For the Redmi, I prefer it because of the glass back. Yes, the Infinix Note 12 VIP also has a glass back on its spec sheet but when you use the device, you don't really feel the glass. But then, like I said, I like the design of the Infinix Note 12 VIP for its expensive looking camera bump but for the Redmi, I'd like it better because I trust that the back is glass. So you have the differences here. Other designs are similar, they both have punch hole cameras. They both have a 3.5mm limiter jack for audio. Going over to what you get in the box, aside the usual paperwork and stuff, for the Infinix Note 12 VIP, you also get an earphone. I love Infinix earphones. The last earphone I used um, from Infinix, that was on the Infinix Zero X, which I reviewed a few months ago. I really enjoyed using that earphone. It was, it was a blast. Yeah, and aside that, you also get 1.5 gigabytes of free data, which you can activate on the MTN Nigeria network. The Infinix Note 12 VIP also comes with its 120 watt charging brick. Oh my god, this is a brick that I would probably keep talking about in this video for quite some time. I was really impressed. It also has a screen protector in the box, so you buy this phone, you also get a screen protector to protect your screen from, you know, damage. And I believe the reason why they added this screen protector is because, well, the Gorilla Glass display or uh, protection, I'd say, on this phone, I don't think it was ever stated which version it is, but I am meant to believe that it's going to be nothing more than Gorilla Glass version. So right here, it's, it's not the best, but at least it's there. For the Redmi though, we have um, a 67 watt charging brick and you also get this really good transparent case, tight and sturdy. So I think for accessories, you have things to you know look out for, but definitely the Note 12 VIP takes this one because of its earphones and uh, the 1.5 gigabyte of free data if you care about that. And you probably shouldn't be comparing a 120 watt charging brick to a 67 watt one. I mean, some laptops don't even have 120 watt charging bricks, and here you have it in the box of a phone. That's something to really admire. Display wise, as I already mentioned, both devices have this punch hole design, but for the VIP, um, it has a slightly larger 6.7 inch AMOLED screen. On paper, it's um, 700 nits mass brightness, but let me tell you this, in real life, it seems to be a little bit brighter than the Redmi for some reason. I don't know why this is the case, but yeah, when I use these devices side by side on a sunny day, I could see better. I, I mean, I could like tell that the Infinix Note 12 VIP is brighter. I don't know. I really don't know because on the Redmi Note 11 Pro, on paper, it's supposed to have a brighter screen. I think 1,100 nits brightness. Yes, but when you use this device against the Note 12 VIP side by side, you would see that the Note 12 VIP is brighter for some reason. I really just can't place my hands on it. Maybe it's because the Redmi Note 11 Pro has a super AMOLED screen with Gorilla Glass 5 protection. These are good things. These are really good things. Uh, but probably those are also why the phone appears less bright. I don't think that makes any sense, but what do you want me to say? But then I admire the smaller camera punch on uh, the punch hole design. It's smaller on the Redmi Note 11 Pro. I really admire that, even though the difference may not really matter to you on daily use because after some time you, you get used to the size of the punch hole camera on the Infinix. It's not like the Infinix is, say, loads bigger, the, the punch hole, no. So, still talking about the display, I'd like to mention the 120Hz refresh rate, which, yeah, both devices have this, but then the Infinix does better, and here's what I mean. When you use the Infinix, you discover that it has 
an auto mode for the 120 hz refresh rate the redmi note 11 pro does not have this it only has the 60 hz and the 120 hz option you either use 60 or you use 120 but on the infamous note 12 vip you get the option to set it to auto where the phone decides when to use 60 hz or when to use 120 hz and i discovered that even with auto mode the infamous note 12 vip functions better with its high refresh rate which by that i mean it recognizes games and uses 120 hz refresh rate for the games though for some reason it doesn't use 120 hz refresh rate on chrome and youtube which even when you set it to 120 hz it still goes down to 60 hz on chrome and youtube but for most games even when it's on auto mode it recognizes games and plays them while at 120 hz refresh rate but on the redmi note 11 pro i don't know what to say but it's lackluster that's the word for me because even when i force the phone to use 120 hz refresh rate if i go into most games the display keeps going back down to 60 hz i try everything i could like i really tried to fix this i tried by um turning off the game to go function i, I tried different things it always goes down to 60 hz in most games the only game which it recognized as a game and stayed at 120 hz was apex legends which also plays very well on the Note 12 vip but for some reason it doesn't go down to 60 hz when i use chrome though it does go back to 60 hz again when i use youtube so yeah that is it for the redmi note 11 pro which is why i would say the 120 hz refresh rate is better on the note 12 vip though i did notice this reddish tint to my fonts when i scroll on the note 12 vip I, I don't know maybe this is just design but when i scroll test i see the tests having this reddish tint to them so probably that has to be looked into <laughs> for the os and skin the note 12 vip released with android 12 plus its xox 10.5 Yes, the OS has ads and bloatware. I think this comes from the skin, not the OS because Android 12 is meant to be pure. So you get ads and you get some bloatware. But fortunately, most of this bloatware cannot be uninstalled. I, I tried, I couldn't uninstall them for some reason. On the Redmi though, you get Android 11 with Mi UI 13. I like the game to both feature which this Redmi that 11 Pro has. I think almost every recent Redmi device has this because it comes with the system security app. So yeah, I like that feature. It is really helpful. It's really useful for gaming. However, the Redmi Note 11 Pro also has bloatware and ads in the system apps. So this bloatware, you can uninstall most of them, but there are still some which you can't uninstall. The ads, however, can be disabled and disable them from the settings of each system app. I also like to mention that both phones have really inaccurate internet speed counter. Oh my god. This I, this is an Android thing because at this point, I noticed this also on the Infinix Zero X which I reviewed. So I can tell you that most Android devices have really inaccurate internet speed counter. Like the speed counter that shows up on your status bar lies. It just lies. It tells you lies. It tells you maybe three, four, five times your actual internet speed. And this is so bad for me. Moving over to the camera, both phones have um, a 108 main sensor. For the selfie, they both have 16 megapixels. I don't know why companies, I mean, phone companies have decided to stick with a 16 megapixel selfie. It's a uh, it's as though they, they never want to move on and it's annoying i must say however pros for the vip are you know the 13 megapixel ultra wide i think yeah so against the redmi's 8 mp but then the redmi has uh, a 2 mp macro a 2 mp depth why the vip only has the main sensor the ultra wide and the 2 mp depth it doesn't have a dedicated macro sensor so there is that but for the vip though you get this quad led back flash you also get a front flash dual led yeah while on the redmi you only get a led flash at the back for video recording ah <laughs> Yeah, this is this is where the Infinix Note 12 VIP blows, literally blows the Redmi Note 11 Pro out of the water. 
and I mean this for some reason. On the Note 12 VIP, you get 2K video recording at 30 FPS. You also get 1080p recording at 60 FPS. Guess what you get on the Redmi Note 11 Pro? You won't believe this. The Redmi Note 11 Pro is limited to 1080p 30 FPS. How? I mean, how is this even possible? <laughs> this is laughable. I really don't know what Xiaomi was thinking when they made this choice because the chip on both devices is the same so they can't really tell me it's a chip limitation this chip supports way more than they are allowing it to here why limit a phone this much to record at 1080p 30 fps i'd like that to sink in this is insane this is oh my god i can't even take this i mean no 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 this is just plain bad plain bad Speaking about performance on both phones, like I mentioned, you get the Helio G96 octa core processor. Yeah, but well, I would expect that they used maybe a better processor on these devices, but well, we will make do with what we get. So, for the Note 12 VIP, I believe it utilizes the processor even better than the Redmi. It hits less and it has more stable FPS while I'm running games. You get the you know, 256 gigabyte of storage option, plus you can use MM Fusion to add up 5 gigabytes to your 8 gigabyte RAM. You also get this dedicated micro SD slot for additional storage. That last one is very important because on the Redmi Note 11 Pro, you only get a hybrid slot. The Redmi Note 11 Pro handles games quite fine i would say the games play okay but then i noticed some lags after some time of playing eFootball 2022 after some time the game starts to slow down noticeably it starts to you know, stutter and the phone hits up quite noticeably too so i think you should take that into consideration when we are talking performance still on performance i'd like to talk about sound performance on both devices, you're getting dual speakers, a 3.5 mm jack. So yeah, we are happy to still see the 3.5 mm jack chugging along on these devices. For the Redmi though, I think it has a richer sound with better stereo separation. Don't get me wrong, please. The VIP device is fine. It has stereo sound as well. But I believe when talking about sound, I'd give that to the Redmi just by a few points. So yeah. Alright, talking about the battery capacity and performance on these devices. On the Infinix Note 12 VIP, you get a 4500 mAh dual cell battery. You also get the very fast 120W hypercharge. I'd like to talk about this charging for a few moments, please. The charging is impressive. Yes, Infinix really did a good job here. It charges really, really fast. On the Redmi though, you get a bigger 5000 mAh single cell battery. You have just one cell. While, like I mentioned on the Infinix, you have dual cell, which helps with the very fast charging. I would also like to warn you. Yes, I'd like to give you a very important warning. Be very careful. Do not lose the supplied Type-C cable that comes with the Redmi Note 11 Pro. If you lose this, you would find it very difficult to get a replacement cable that will support the turbo charge. That is the 67 watt turbo charge that the Redmi Note 11 Pro can do. I tried this with two high current Type-C cables. A Type-C cable from Govi, which I tried with Infinix. It works, charges even at 120 watts. But then when I tried it with the Redmi, it was only limited to quick charge. I also tried the Infinix Type-C cable on the Redmi. I couldn't get the Redmi to turbo charge, no matter what I did. On both smartphones though, I'd say the battery performance is adequate. Both of them can last to the day with normal usage. The Infinix does edge out for me because of its hypercharge feature, which means you don't even get to notice when the battery gets low, as it takes less than 25 minutes to refill it to 100%. It's also very impressive how Infinix achieved this, because the phone stays cool even when you hypercharge, while still you know, charging so, so far. When we talk about connectivity, both devices have the NFC feature. The Bluetooth version on both devices, according to IDA64 app, says uh, it's version 5.2. On spec though, the Infinix Bluetooth version is not stated, but then when I checked with Ida 64, like I said, it says 5.2. This is also the same version on the Redmi Note 11 Pro. So I guess connectivity wise, they are both on par. 
But then on the Redmi, you get an infrared blaster. You also get support for more 4G bands. Though these bands are not really relevant if you reside in Nigeria because they are not bands that you use for Nigerian network. We've compared these two devices and I must say it is really difficult trying to choose between two devices that have these many similarities as we've seen between these two. However, despite their numerous similarities in specs, there are still a few notable differences that I believe are significant enough to make you choose one over the other. The Infinix Note 12 VIP has its luxury design, a design that doesn't only look cool but allows it to properly utilize the Helio G96 chipset. It's also slightly slimmer and weighs less, even though you may not really feel the weight difference every time. The AMOLED screen is a beauty and the high refresh rate that's properly utilized in games makes it much better. Unlike the Redmi Note 11 Pro that even when set to 120Hz, still somehow runs the display at 60Hz once a game is launched. I also can't speak enough of how impressed I am with the hypercharge feature. Infinix obviously did a very good job by using a dual cell battery which helps to divide the current going into each cell, thereby making them both run cooler. I did notice from AccuBattery that the battery is reported to be at just a little over 50% of its original capacity after barely a month of use. I assume this to be a bug. My guess would be that the AccuBattery app has a problem reading the dual cell battery capacity. Maybe because it doesn't understand how the batteries work or something. Among the reasons to buy the Infinix Note 12 VIP instead of the Note 11 Pro is the video recording capability. Unlike the Redmi Note 11 Pro that's locked to 1080p at 30fps for both the rear and front cameras, the Infinix Note 12 VIP supports 1440p recording on both its rear and selfie cam. Plus, it has a front flash and quad LED flash on the back, which as expected are brighter than the Redmi's. The Redmi, of course, does not have any flash on the front. The so it still takes really good pics by using the screen at its backlight. Trust me, when it comes to video recording, the Redmi doesn't stand a chance against the Infinix Note 12 VIP. You really just can't pass on the 1440p option and go for 1080p at what? 30 FPS? No way. No way that's gonna compete, man. There's just no way. However, with all that said, I still feel the Redmi Note 11 Pro does take better pictures and the presence of a dedicated macro cam may also be of interest to you. The Redmi Note 11 Pro uses its screen as a flash when you're taking photos at night with its selfie cam and these pictures come out really great. But then, unless you only take photos and not record videos, you'll be disappointed with the camera setup of the Redmi Note 11 Pro. Like I mentioned, it is limited to 1080p 30fps for a reason that I still cannot fathom. On the Infinix Note 12 VIP, you get the option to do 1440p even with the selfie cam. So I don't have to tell you this, but the Infinix Note 12 VIP blows the Redmi Note 11 Pro out of the water where we talk about video recording. The Infinix Note 12 VIP is also the only right choice if you want an internal storage of 256GB. Plus, it has a dedicated slot for an SD card which means you could expand the storage even further while still having dual SIM cards inserted. It's also a no-brainer that the Infinix is the right choice if you care about being on a more recent Android version, at least until Xiaomi releases an Android 12 update for the Note 11 Pro. Unless of course you prefer me IUI to XOS for some reason, then you could go for the Redmi, I would say. I do love the Redmi Note 11 Pro for some specific features like the game tubo mode in the Prince Store Security app which I talked about earlier and things like the richer stereo sound plus better separation, the Gorilla Glass 5 protection, the infrared blaster for those that use it. I personally haven't needed it in a while but I love the fact that it's available. It's a feature or a function that I really love. The smaller punch hole design is also something I admire, plus the built-in screen notification feature, which I couldn't find on the Infinix. But as I've already made clear, the Redmi Note 11 Pro manages to disappoint me in ways that I never imagined. Xiaomi, what really went wrong? I don't really understand why they had to cut corners in places you would never think anyone would cut corners, but here goes Xiaomi cutting corners in the wrong places. With all that said, I think it's up to you to decide if the cons of each device is problem enough to make you choose the other, or perhaps a different device entirely, or maybe you're really on a tight budget and would, instead of the specs, let the price of the smartphones be the decider. I hope that whichever of these devices you end up going for serves you well though. If you like this video, do click on like and please share with your friends using the share button. If you're new to the channel, please do well to subscribe and see you in our next video. Bye.